Hey everybody and welcome to Not Conscious. This is Mark Poles. Today is Sunday. Actually, it's Monday for uh, April 5th, 2021. Monday. Uh, it's been a long day, a long weekend. Just got back from Vegas, had a good time. But um, today's Not Conscious is going to be pretty quick. It's going to be pretty basic. But um, it's something I see on Twitter all the time is people are asking about equipment used for podcasting. So I wanted to share the equipment that we use on Knocked Conscious and Beer Googles. Um, I want to go through just the little pieces here. So I'll just describe the microphones, uh, the cables, the other equipment you plug it into, computer, all that good stuff. And then I'll talk about one little hint that's probably something a lot of people don't think about because they all think about the equipment being the most important thing, but uh, I'll share that at the end. So let's start with the first piece. The microphone is one of the most important pieces, obviously, for podcasting. If it's, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Um, the microphone that we use here on Not Conscious and Beer Googles is the Shure SM7B. I think it's the flagship for podcasting. It's used on a lot of major podcasts as well. Uh, but it's also the equipment you plug it into, but basically the Shure SM7B is the flagship, uh, grand poobah microphone on the back. There's a setting that's either like a straight line or like a curve line. I have it set. So the back has a little curve on it, um, because it's like a frequency response thing. Good for vocals, obviously for podcasting. Cause if it sounds like poop, people are not going to listen. The next piece obviously would be, um, it's only an XLR cable, so it's an XLR microphone only, so you have to plug it into an XLR cable. You then would either put it onto a floor stand or a microphone boom arm. Uh, either one work great. The SM7B is not too heavy, so it works pretty well. The next thing we plug it into, uh, one of the advantages to the SM7B, it's, a, uh, it's not a condenser microphone, so it's not hot. So it's not picking up as much ambient sound. It's really good for that because there's a lot of ambient sound with a lot of places that we podcast from or from where we podcast. Um, so what we have, we have the dynamic mic, the Shure SM7B. I actually have a connected piece to that. It's called the Cloudlifter CL1, CL-1, Cloudlifter CL-1. It basically raises the gain or the pickup of the mic, but does not increase any noise. So it's absolutely silent. But it is somewhat almost necessary for this particular for particular microphone because it is, uh, it's kind of a quieter pickup in that respect. So it's good to have that extra gain. And then finally, what I actually plug it into for the audio side of our podcast is the Rode Procaster or uh, the Rodecaster Pro actually is what it is. Uh, it's basically four XLR inputs, uh, four headphones, separate headphone volumes, four sliders. It is the end-all be-all for podcasting. It works great for up to four people uh, for sure, but uh, it is ridiculously versatile, has amazing um, uh, electronics inside of it to help with like DSers and the uh, frequency response and things like that. So it's really awesome. And then when you set everything up, you hear what our podcast sounds like. Sounds like, and it's, uh, in my opinion, studio quality. So once again, it's the Shure SM7B microphone XLR connected to a Cloudlifter CL-1 into the Rodecaster Pro. Now, a lot of people look at the price tags and go, holy crap, Ola, that's a lot of money. But I've upgraded twice now, and what I spent on my two like upgraded systems, I could have just bought this once and had it knocked out of the park right out of the bat. So if you are serious, really serious about it, make the investment. People will listen to your podcast because it sounds really good. Um, it, you know, I've had... I've had great content or I've listened to great content podcasts that are dissonant. And unfortunately I cannot listen to them. Um, maybe I'm a little bit of a, an audio snob, but it's hard to listen to something that, you know, 
has a lot of background noise or just depending on the voice of the of the hosts and things like that. So once again, uh, Shure SM7B, Cloudlifter CL1, Roadcaster Pro. Now, we do also have a video component to us. Uh, we do YouTube as well. We bought two Canon HFR800s. They're $250 a piece. You can get them at pretty much any major retailer. Um, $250 a piece, two of them, so $500 out the door basically plus tax. And you've got H, their HD. And we connect that into uh, the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro. And the reason we bought the Pro over the basic ATEM Mini is that it has a hard drive you can plug into and we record directly onto hard drive. Plus it has the uh, four HDMI inputs that you can switch back and forth with picture in picture uh, option as well on that. So that's our video setup. Uh, the Canon HF R eight hundreds, two of them, one uh, pointed at each host, and the uh, connected to the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro. Um, yeah, all in all, not too bad. Uh, if you're looking to purchase something like this, the, another tip, I would recommend that you uh, go talk to a gentleman, reach out to a gentleman named Darius Beats. That's B E A T Z. He works at Sweetwater Sound or Sweetwater.com. Uh, call the number and ask for Darius Beats. Tell him that you know me. Um, I've purchased basically all this equipment. I purchased the Cloudlifter, the Roadcaster Pro, and the Shores from him. And basically, you just want to shoot him an email or just give him a call and say, I want to purchase these three things. I know you can get the Cloudlifter, the Roadcaster Pro, and the Shure SM7B there. I don't believe you can get the camera or the ATM mini pro there. So, but for the audio side, uh, just tell him I'd love your best and final price. He will take a, he'll knock a couple bucks off each piece and it becomes pretty, a uh, really good deal actually at that point. So talk to him, tell him, you know, me, I send everyone that I know that's asked to him. I believe very strongly in the sure SM seven B it's, it just sounds amazing. Um, one other microphone I might, add as a replacement if you don't want to go the xlr route worth all the all the equipment and you want to be a little more simple and go usb there is a new device called the shore mv7 and that one has usb and xlr input it's kind of like shore's baby uh the sm7b's baby brother so it's a little smaller i don't think it has the exact uh, electronics but it is obviously updated brand new electronics as well so it uh it does have USB and XLR, so you can graduate. And then maybe you can then go XLR when you get a Roadcaster Pro in the MV7, and then when you can graduate up from the MV7 to the, to the SM7B, if that's how that works for you. But once again, this setup, in my opinion, sounds pretty good. I've, I've had a lot of people on the show or a lot of people listen that are audiophiles that uh, are, are very impressed with the sound. And it's, it's a little bit of an investment, but it's not, in my opinion, detrimental. I think it's something that many people, if you're really serious about this, would would uh, sacrifice uh, you know, a night out or something here and there and save up. But what's great as well about Sweetwater, and this is not a Sweetwater commercial by any means, but um, they, they've had like up to 48 months no interest financing. So that's always a benefit. So it doesn't hurt you in that respect. So you can just make steady payments every month for X amount of months and uh, pay things off like that. Once again, Shure SM7B, Cloudlifter CL1, Roadcaster Pro. That's the sound quality. For the video, the can two Canon uh, HF R800s plugged into a Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro. And I love that Mini Pro because, like I said, it does have four HDMI inputs. Well, there's HDMI Mini into an adapter for regular HDMI into that from the two Canon devices, but I can also plug a computer or something onto that. So we could always go to a screen if we want to do a screenshot or something at the time. It's really convenient, really awesome. Um, now for the, the greatest tip of all, before we call it a night, soundproofing or sound absorption. If you notice, if you're listening to this recording right now, there's nothing. I don't think you picking up anything. Um, I built panels basically with rock wool 
sound, uh, basically, uh, sound batting that you can get like a Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, and you basically put a framing around it, like a one by two, and you frame it around the outside, put two of them in it next to each other, cover them, cover them with burlap. And I believe I built one, two, three, four, five, I have six panels up. So I built six of them. Um, and it really does help get the sound out. Uh, in addition, I have these things called bass traps. They're basically little corner pieces of styrofoam blocks that you put in the corners of each, you know, each four, each of four corners, if it's just a regular, you know, rectangular square room. Um, and it helps with catch all the, uh, bass reverberations in the room. So it doesn't have that, uh, humming rever- you know, reverberated hum, uh, feedback. And then the last tip is if you don't want to go with that in sound installation, you go a little bit, uh, I don't know if simpler is the right word, but, um, might just be a little bit easier to manage is you can buy these one foot by one foot foam and they look like, like triangle little spikes on them. And basically each spike is one square, uh, one square block or one square piece. So it's 12 across 12 down for a square foot basically. So you can cut it by inch. And what you get then is you get this sound foam, you know, foam board, at dollar you can get at the dollar store usually it's sold by 20 by 30 and you cut down the foam um and you just get like a not super glue but that spray glue spray adhesive you spray it on the back stick it to the foam board done it's kind of like a a really simple way or a little bit you know more generic basic way to get it uh get the soundproofing but like i said if you are serious i certainly recommend making some i mean the costs of those are very expensive. They're hundreds of dollars in some cases. And the ones that I built are as good, if not better even, um, just because of the materials that were used. So once again, this has been a pretty brief knocked conscious. We thank you for joining us. Uh, this will be aired on the 6th of April. So tomorrow, but, uh, it's basically the equipment that we use here at Knock conscious. Um, we had 10,000 downloads last week and I just want to thank everybody for, for their support for everyone who's tuned in um we've done it we did it in less than nine months and that's really impressive um i want to thank chris peralta uh specifically for helping us get there because without him i don't know how much we how how well it would be received in some in a lot of cases so thank you chris um thank you to everyone who's giving us a listen, giving us the opportunity, kick the tires if it were, or as it were. So, um, but once again, if you are serious in any way about, um, these pieces, you know, this is a good, good, a good investment. Sure. Sure. SM7B cloud lifter CL1 roadcaster pro. It's uh great. Now headphone wise, uh, the ones I do uh, recommend are the audio technica MV, or M50X. Um, I got them refurbished. I think they're $150 normal. I think I got them refurbished right in the $100 range. I may have gotten them through Reverb.com, something like that. So um, I'll put a couple links up. Uh, the Sweetwater, I'll put the name of the person in Darius Beats to who to talk to. And uh, I'll put up the, the other pieces. I'll just have a list of what we actually use here. But it is a commonly asked question. Once again, thank you again. If you haven't already, subscribe, follow, rate, review. We we can use all the help we can get. I mean, 10,000 downloads is awesome. I'm so grateful. And thank you again. And, uh, yeah, I just I don't know what to say. I'm just really grateful that we got there. Yeah, I mean, in only nine months. So thank you again. I hope this uh, quick podcast helps people who are looking to start something. Do it. It's, it's relatively straightforward. Once you get those pieces plugged in, you get a little sound absorption. You're going to be so happy with how it sounds that you're going to be really uh, motivated to put more content out there. So SM7B, Cloudlifter C, uh, CL1, Roadcaster Pro, pretty decent sound absorption, a lot of it, um, bass, bass traps in the corners. Thank you again so much to everybody who's listened. Today is April 5th, 2021, but obviously this will be aired tomorrow, April 6th. Have a great night, everybody. Take care.